What's up everyone? I hope you're having a wonderful day today. I want to show you how to utilize metadata inside of Final Cut Pro 10. Now, you may be wondering what I mean by metadata, and if you are, that's fine. Every clip that you have inside of Final Cut has information attached to it. You can visually look at the clip, which right now I have a bunch of still images. So if we look at this still image here of the brushes, the makeup brushes, we can see that clip and we know what the contents of it is just visually looking at it. But there's a lot of other information attached to this clip. For example, if I look at the inspector, I can see that this image is called blur-brushes-closeup. I can click the little eye that's here in the inspector to get more information about that clip. So now I'm seeing the resolution of this picture. I can see when it was last modified and I can get information based on the camera name and some other metadata here. Most of these fields are empty for this still image because it's one I just downloaded off of the internet so there's not too much information attached to it. But we do see a lot of extra data that you can't get just by visually looking at the picture. So that metadata is there. You just have to utilize it to organize clips and whatever else you want to do with it. So let me show you how to see some more of that information. I'm going to hide the inspector on the right just by clicking this button, or you can use the shortcut Command 4. And I'm also going to hide the timeline, which you can use Control command 2 to hide the timeline. I'm then going to go over to the left column here and click the button all the way on the left to hide the library sidebar. And I'm going to resize the viewer just by dragging the middle. I'm going to resize that over to the right. By doing this, I'm just maximizing the amount of space on the left column here for all of the information here that's in the browser, just so we can see so much more of it. So what we're seeing right now is the film strip view of all the content here. So it's just a bunch of pictures. If I scroll through, you're just seeing all of the images. I can go up to the top right to the appearance menu and change the size of all of those images. And I can zoom in if there's video clips in here. I can zoom in or zoom out of them by dragging this second slider. So if I go up towards the, uh, let's see, towards the bottom, I think I have some video clips in here. Yeah, like these are the ones from the, uh, the run, the hiking run that we're going down. So if I'm zooming into it, say I go to one minute, it's zooming into those clips and we can see a lot more specifics for each of them here. So that's the film strip view, just kind of an overview of it. You can group clips and sort them, but there's not too much data available for us. So if we wanted a little bit more data, I can go up to the view menu here. And if we go down to browser, we see some options that we can check off. So I can enable, say, waveforms. I can see the used media ranges and some skimmer info. Skimmer info is kind of cool. If I click that, when I skim across or drag the mouse across a clip, that skimming shows us information about the clip. So I can see things like keywords, say on the cat pictures here. I know that not only is it a cat because I added the cat keyword, but I'm, this is Colby, so I can see the Colby keyword is there as well. Same thing, these are outside or outdoor clips, so I see that information. Here, this uh, shot has people in it, so we see the two-person and wide shot um, show up there because they were automatically grouped into those. So that's one way to see some metadata, but really what this video is and what I want to show you in this one is the list view and how to utilize the list view. So you're going to want to click this button next to where it says All Clips, and this button will toggle between the film strip and the list views or list modes, they like to call it. So we're going to go to the list mode. And here in the list mode, I'm still grouping all the clips based on the date imported. But I'm actually going to go up here and change that. Instead of date imported, I'm just going to switch it to none. This is just going to be a large mess of clips. So we see projects, which I have 23 of. I'm going to click the triangle, the disclosure triangle here to close that. And I'm going to hit the disclosure triangle to close the clips as well. So you can see what I have here. So we're starting with nothing. We have everything closed, so we can't see any data on the right side. But we can see all of the fields that are available. I have a start point, end point. I can scroll to the right just using the uh, trackpad or the mouse here to scroll across. And I see all of the available 
fields. Well, that's not all that's there. Go ahead and hit Control and click on the, one of the fields at the top, or right click, and you're going to see a list of every field that's here. And all the ones that have check marks are the ones that are currently there, but things like real, scene, uh, file type, date imported, all these are not in that column at the top. So what I can do is hit Show All Columns, and that'll go and enable all of them. Now if I scroll to the right, now you are seeing a, whole, a lot more information. We're seeing the scene, the shot, the media start and end date, all of these additional fields here. So if we wanted to use them, I can open up the clips. And now if I scroll to the right, we're seeing all of those additional fields. Some of them, like the multi-cam clips that I was using for the hike, we can see the camera name in the reel because we set up that as multi-cam clips. If you watch some of the other tutorials, you'll see that. Uh, we've also added here frame size, so we can see the various frame size, frame rates, a lot of data that can be very useful, especially if you're working in an environment where you're switching between all of those formats and those sizes, it can be helpful to know what you're working with, what you're grabbing before you bring it down on a timeline and without having to open up the inspector to get this information. So a lot of data there, you can uh, on your own go through and see all the the data and the information is there. Many of these fields are editable. Things like the 360 modes, you can go in and make changes to these on the fly here in, in these fields that are there, which is nice. Um, what else? I guess the other fields that are here with things like camera angle and notes, uh, they're not drop down menus, but you can just double click on them and you will go in to be able to edit those um, things like adding notes or camera angles. Uh, you can go in and do that. The other thing that I really like about the list view is if you hit the little triangles, the disclosure triangles next to either the clips or uh, uh, any, really any of the, the pieces of media that are here, you're going to see additional sections of this clip. So this one is this outdoor clip that was a bad clip, so I rejected it so I can see that it's rejected. And I also see where I added a keyword to the entire clip to mark um, everything is outside. And these uh, little markings, you can actually click on them and rename them. So I'm being able to make changes to the what's here is really nice. Um, the keyword you can't make a change to because that's the keyword, but these rejected sections, I could definitely do that. Um, <laughs> rejected, I wouldn't do that with. Usually if I reject it, I don't care about those sections. But if there's a clip, Let's see what I got here. Let's use, yeah, let's use this clip as an example. So uh, actually this one, there's nothing going on. So I'm actually gonna reject that. Let me go to a longer one where we can actually have an example. Yeah. Let's see what we got here. Let's use this one. So this one, um, we're at a farm here and I do this pan from the sky and I pan across to the chickens and I notice that my shadow is in the shot, which we can see there. So I, I adjust everything, I re readjust, and then I go up and I do the pan again without the shadow there, just to get that out of there. So this second part is really the favorite. So I'm gonna click and drag across that part and I'm gonna press the F key to mark that as a favorite. I'm gonna reject the first shot because I didn't like it, so. We'll take that part and hit delete to reject it. So by doing that, let me scroll up here so it's at the top. This image 0993, now if I hit the disclosure triangle, I can see we have a rejected portion and a favorite portion at the end. So I can rename this favorite portion. And I'll just call it a pan, that's fine. Kind of a pan tilt thing. But I can rename that favorite section. And this is really helpful when you have um, clips, especially really long clips, where you're gonna mark multiple parts of that clip as favorite, but you wanna go a step further and actually name each of those favorites to make it easier to sort. You can do that here in the list view. You can't do that in the film strip view, so that's one helpful thing here in the, the list view. Um, that's gonna get pretty close to what I wanted to show in this quick video. What questions do you have? Leave a comment below and give a thumbs up if you like this video.